The International Fellowship Program of the Ford Foundation was founded on the belief that education enables people to improve their own lives and assist others in the common pursuit of more equitable and just societies. Since its inception in 2001, this program has expanded to 22 countries in Africa, Asia, Latin America, the Middle East and Russia. In Senegal, 97 fellows coming from poor backgrounds were selected between 2001 and 2010. They were given the opportunity to study in Canada, the United States, France, Switzerland, Belgium, as well as in Senegal. Saini Tiam lost his father when he was only 12 years old. He was raised by his mother and his three sisters and brothers who helped him succeed academically. He holds an engineering technologist degree from the Sheikh Hanta Diop University of Dakar. Professionally, Saini served his country in the areas of solid waste, plastic waste and wastewater management as well as the promotion of hygiene in schools. As part of his community work, he came up against many scientific and technical challenges. That is why, in spite of his advanced age, that was 43 years old, he was awarded a fellowship to study at the Agricultural College of the University of Jambleau in Belgium. La bourse m'a permis euh, d'être nommé Thanks to the scholarship, I was hired at a high-ranking position at the National Sanitation Office where I headed the service in charge of supervising and coordinating all the projects entrusted to the division in charge of planning. So, all the programs and projects were initiated, directed and supervised by the department that I coordinated at the National Sanitation Service. And I confess that without the IFP Fellowship, I wouldn't have been appointed to that position at the Ministry of Health. Saini Tiam then returned home with a higher university degree in sanitary engineering. While working in a USAID-supported project, he strives for better access to water, sanitation and the promotion of hygiene in the villages. In the region of Casamance in southern Senegal, the activities he conducts mostly benefit the populations displayed by the war who are returning to their homelands. In these villages, the project under the leadership of Saini initiated hygiene techniques and practices and led these people into using latrines only to relieve themselves. Our kids used to get repeatedly sick, but three months after the inception of the project, we can notice a significant progress. Every month, we send the kids to or three times to hospital for medical checkups. Thanks to this project and the hygiene practices we have learned, now we disinfect our drinking water. As a result, now our wives and kids seldom get sick. In the first term of 2012, I mean in January, February and March, I had to deal with six cases. It means that with a hundred pupils, you have a hundred times six divided by a hundred, which means a six percent decrease rate. So, as you can see, there is change because the rate has decreased from 15 percent before the project to six percent after the project. In addition to striving to improve access to water and sanitation, Saini also trained villagers who are now able to manage things on their own. Today, I have trained more than 200 masons throughout the southern and eastern regions of Senegal, I mean in the second shore, Kolda, Sidiou and Tambacounda. Consequently, those masons have significantly increased the incomes thanks to the training. He also raised awareness about the risks related to the conservation and the use of pesticides. In addition to that, people have learned a lot because in the past some of them used to keep their pesticides in their bedrooms, others would carry water or milk in old receptacles that used to contain pesticides and that used to have very bad consequences on their health. Today, people are giving up such practices and they have noticed that they are no more spending most of their time at the doctors but in weekly markets and their farms to increase their incomes. Also, the children are healthier 
and more regular at school. Les enfants aussi ne sont plus malades. Ils vont régulièrement maintenant à l'école. Safiatou Lou Mbalde was born in Ziegenchor in southern Senegal, where she had a normal education. She later on studied at the Sheikh Anta Diop University of Dakar, where she earned a master's in geography and a diploma of advanced studies in environmental sciences. Thanks to this experience in assisting communities in the regions of Ziegenchor and Kolda on issues related to health and nutrition, she was awarded the IFP Fellowship of the Ford Foundation. She enrolled in the Department of Social and Preventive Medicine at Laval University in Quebec, Canada, from which she graduated with a master's degree in community health. I have new skills in several aspects of community health. Actually, the training was more focused on preventive health than on clinical health. So after completion of the training, we are equipped with the techniques and tools that enable us to support grassroots rural population by promoting practices that enable them to improve their health and nutrition. So we develop practices upstream of creative medicine. Uh, de la santé curative. Upon her return to her home country in 2006, Safiatu firmly committed to side with the most disadvantaged rural populations. As a result, she has contributed to the development of basic literacy training materials and grids to train young people and especially women in Polar language. She also contributes to build the institutional, technical and organizational capacities of very remote grassroots organizations in Senegal. Safia Touloum nous a porté de confiance. Safia Touloum has helped us gain self-confidence. Today, women know their rights. Les femmes participent. When there are meetings, they take the floor and express their needs and requirements. Ce que nous voulons, on parle ça. Any member of Dirfel can answer to your question. Actually, when we launched Dirfel, we were 24 people. We had huge ambitions, but we did not have the means to make them come true. Life is very hard in our area here because we need to travel to Lugar to work and make some money before we can go back to realize our projects. But today, thanks to Safietu, everything has changed. In this region of Senegal, where the thermometer sometimes soars up to 50 degrees in the shade, water is a very valuable commodity. But here, thanks to the support of the NGO Serfla, the Center for Studies, Research and Training in African Languages where Safiato works, people have learned to fend for themselves. We wanted to support this initiative by assisting them in project development, helping them find partners who can provide them seedling that they can plant and water, small equipment like watering pots. So the NGO helped them find partners to finance these market gardening projects. I personally facilitated the research for technicians and I monitored women. Also, I sensitized women on the importance of using market and gardening produce, especially vegetables, to upgrade their own family's diet. Thanks to the support of Serpla and Geo, we are living a better life. Actually, we used to have only one garden that we have split into 12 plots of land that we have developed to improve our production. Thank God, and with the support of Omar C. and Safier too, everything has changed. Aminata Diena passed the arts-based high school diploma in 1987 from John Fitzgerald Kennedy High School for Girls, far from her hometown of Thiers and without any host family in Dakar. 
After completing a first degree in geography at the Sheikh Hanta Diop University of Dakar and a secondary school teaching certificate from Ecole Normale Supérieure, that is the teacher training school, she became a teacher of history and geography. Her unabated commitment to young girls with special needs have earned her the recognition of academic authorities, learners and the girls' families. Then she was awarded the Ford Foundation Fellowship. The IFP Fellowship has enabled me to realize that uh, I have huge but untapped potential owing to the type of training we are given in our universities here in Senegal. But once in Quebec, I confess, I learned a lot, especially in terms of research methodology. That's why when I came back home, I joined research centers and training institutions in order to share my experience in research methodology. Jenna Aminata Ndiaye studied at the University of Sherbrooke in Quebec, where she earned a Master of Educational Sciences. Once back home, she was recruited by the NGO Plan International as the coordinator of a project supporting the education of 1,000 girls in the borough of Wakanguna in the region of Kaolak. Through her efforts, not only the girls' school dropout rate has decreased, but they even have better grades. In the past, boys would sit at the front benches, but over time, Girls have taken the lead now. The project has provided the girls with manuals and learning materials. Thanks to this free distribution of materials by the mill fee and good governance projects and the ministry, we now have a huge quantity of manuals without which it would have been very difficult. Now we have one book per student. She also provides health assistance to students with special needs. In addition to her in-school activities, Aminata Diena has engaged in the capacity building of women in the region of Kaulak. For example, Seina Bunyeng owes Aminata Diena her job. When Aminata realized I was working as a volunteer, she further involved me in more activities. She told me the project was searching for leaders. The job advertised was second people who had a baccalaureate degree or some college education. So she urged me to apply and see how it works. Now I work for the project and I earn a salary. As a woman and IFP fellow who has successfully completed her education, my goal was to tell parents, mothers, and especially young girls that everything is possible. Look at me today. I'm trying to make them understand that although I have been educated according to local traditional values, I can now discuss issues related to employment, education, health and development, and so and so. Another important contribution I'm making within the community is to shape a new vision of development, helping them understand that rather than being dependent on foreign aid or international funding, first of all, development means an individual and collective awareness. So each and every one of us should understand the need to take actions personally and locally before we can benefit from external support. Sambun Jai has always lived in St. Louis, his hometown. He has always been very active in local community life in this city. It is this community involvement, coupled with a remarkable academic career, that earned him to be selected among the recipients of the IFP Fellowship Program. He holds a PhD in Sociology from the University of Quebec in Montreal. 
I have pledged to side with my native community, I mean rural and urban communities, and I work with several organizations that help conduct this work. This process has been running for more than 15 years now, and I am not only a community activist, a volunteer providing technical support for community intermediation, but also I intervene as local development professional. While studying, Sambunjai managed to initiate partnerships between the city of St. Louis and the city of Gatineau. Sambu is very much involved in the activities of capacity building of local elected officials and civil society leaders. His training in Canada has played a central role in his endeavors to further link up the university with the society. He is committed to serve the community to enhance the cooperation between local stakeholders and their quest for a better future. The communities have decided to manage household waste that the local or central government has failed to manage. So my work consists in supporting them not only in technical proposal drafting, but also in raising funds from French decentralized cooperation agencies, particularly from the city of Lille, which provided funds to buy carts and organize training sessions. My work here also includes the provision of technical support and giving warning signs. We have capitalized on this system that we have replicated in other cities. For instance, in 2006, when I came back from Canada, I went to the municipality of Rosso, where I helped implement a non-conventional waste management system. And Rosso being a border town, it's a crossroad gathering many passengers and therefore a lot of waste. Today, there are four youth NGOs that collect waste in the town with the support of the municipality that pays them stipends. Sambu has contributed to the creation of neighborhood councils for the better management of local problems. Since the creation of the neighborhood council, people have understood that the municipality is first of all a development institution before being a political one. Now, there is a direct connection between the populations and the municipality. Thanks to God and to Sambu who came from Selwe to teach us working methods, we have succeeded in setting up this neighborhood council. Initially, there were misunderstandings, but some would clear them all and helped us delineate the powers of neighborhood representative. Otherwise, there will be conflicts between the neighborhood representative and the neighborhood councillor. Sambu also helped the women fish processors to overcome their weaknesses and improve their incomes. I have known Sambu for a long time. The first time we met, he was preparing his thesis, in which he pointed out our strengths and weaknesses. We realized that our difficulties were more related to cells. In the past, we used to display dry or smoked fish on iron sheets and then haggle with customers who go back to wait and resell. After completion of his thesis, Sambu recommended us to weigh and sell our products to make more profits. All the recipients of the International Fellowship Program of the Ford Foundation, known as the alumni, are very active in their local communities. They have set up an association. L'association alumni IFP Senegal. IFP Alumni Association of Senegal is created in 2007 by a dozen of IFP fellows who came home after completing their studies in Canada, USA, France and Switzerland. And membership to the association is open to all the IFP alumni in general, no matter their countries of residence. The contribution of these alumni has been instrumental in the development of their communities. But the challenges are still numerous. To ensure a better future for rural communities, such a program must be put on a permanent footing. This is an opportunity to strengthen our community activism, our background and our perseverance in community work, and returning and giving something back to our communities is the utmost expression of our gratefulness.
investissement au bénéfice des communautés. The best way to capitalize on this training is to arouse the interest of uh, international organizations and foundations in this model so that they can finance similar programs in order to enable us to recruit more Senegalese people who really need this program. Comment faire pour que how to make funds available to ensure the sustainability of the program. This is a common challenge to every one of us. I mean, not only those of us who are involved in the management of the program in the different countries, but also, and above all, the promoters of the project, who certainly know other funding sources or resources that are not known to us des ressources ou des sources de financement que nous, nous ne connaissons pas.